Hello, welcome back to Learn Economy. And today we are going to discuss the various indivisibilities that is there in the Big Push theory. The concept and theory of Big Push is something that is already discussed in one of the previous videos in Learn Economy channel. So I'll be providing the link of the very same in the description box. So if you haven't uh, have got some information or awareness or idea related to the theory of big push you can refer to that and then come back to this video and see the specifications related to the various indivisibilities in the theory of big push so let's get started uh, for today's session so before starting let me tell you that like uh, before going to the indivisibilities let me tell you that when it comes to the theory of big push, this concept has been put forward by a very famous economist, Rasistin Rodin. And I'm not writing it uh, here right now because this is something that I've already explained in the previous video that I had uh, mentioned to you just now. So I'll be providing anyway uh, the link of that in the description box so that you can refer to the same. So this theory was something which was put forward by Rasistin Rodin and what he tells is that <coughs> We should have a balanced development approach and whenever you go for a balanced development approach, you should have a huge level of investment happening in the economy. So if you go for a lump sum or a huge or a large investment in the economy, this huge or large or big size investment will be creating various opportunities for economic growth because you are investing simultaneously in different industries and that too you are making a huge investment okay the size of the size of the investment is very big <clears throat> so this will be creating various uh, positive externalities this will be creating so much uh, complementarities uh, because various industries are interrelated all industries are interrelated to each other or to one another so as a result of this you will be having various positive externalities both internal as well as external but he was specifically focusing on external economies the one that would be coming from some other industry the, the kind of externality that is enjoyed by a particular firm uh, or a particular industry uh, let it be industry because we are talking about various industries right so uh, this would be a kind of externality that would be enjoyed by a particular industry as a result of some positive effects that happens outside this particular industry. This would be the positive externality. So these positive externalities would be coming. And uh, uh, for the very same reason, we have to go for a big push to the economy. And this big push is something that we consider in the form of a big investment. And there should be a critical minimum level of investment that should be sufficient enough to push the economy to the path of development and that was what uh, this person uh, resisting Rodin was telling about and while putting forward his theory of big push he was explaining about the various indivisibilities that we can have in the economy and that is the basic subject matter of today's session let's see the various indivisibilities here <coughs> so the first indivisibility that he was talking about is the indivisibility when it comes to production function and what does production function show production function shows the relationship between inputs and output or you can say that okay let let me write it the relationship between various inputs and output isn't it this is production function so you can say that Q, your output is a function of various um, inputs that you use would be labor, capital, technology, uh, land, etc. So there are, have been many inputs that you will be using so as to produce output. So many inputs would be there. So whenever there is a change in any of these inputs, this would be affecting the output. This is what you consider in the name of production function. Now. What Rasistin Rodin is telling is that these indivisibilities of inputs, this will be creating some increasing returns to some extent. Like he was giving some emphasis to what is known as social overhead capital. And what is social overhead capital? 
social overhead capital are certain investment that you will be making in infrastructure. So, social overhead capital shows the infrastructure in the economy. This will be power, this will be um, investment that you go for transportation, communication, roads, all these would be acting as infrastructure, railways. Okay. So, whenever you go for uh, the investment in social overhead capital, you can have some increasing returns. Okay. And this is what he was referring to. There exists some production indivisibility. If the indivisibility is happen due to indivisibility is of inputs. You, you, your inputs are, some of the inputs are indivisible. For example, if you think about a capital or a machinery. Certain minimum number of laborers should be there so as to maximize the efficiency of utilization of machinery. If you have, so for example, if you are employing them, some six number of people and you know that the proportion here is, the efficient proportion here is 1 is to 6. Okay. That means in order to operate one missionary, the different parts of one missionary, you should be having six employees. You are now, right now, you know that uh, dif different industries, many of the industry, almost all of the industries are going for assembly line production. So, there would be a big missionary that would be there. It will be having different, different parts or a single missionary will be having different parts which and each of the parts would get operated by some person, some labor. For example, a single missionary is having some six uh, operational parts or some six uh, basic functions and these six basic functions are being con controlled and monitored by six people. So, in order to have this efficient and effective working of this missionary, you should need six laborers. That is the, that is the indivisible part of the very same okay now uh, that means you cannot go for five laborers so as to have efficient utilization of this missionary if you go for five laborers you will go for an inefficient way of managing or uh, dealing with this missionary so, this is something that you have to consider. Your missionary is something indivisible. Labor can be something divisible. Like you can reduce the number of laborers from 6 to 5, from 4 to, uh, you can increase it from 4 to 5 like that. But the case with missionary is not so. You should have an optimum proportion of labor and missionary so as to make it efficient working on the same. Your missionary is something that is indivisible. Okay. Now, indivisibility of demand. It talks about the capital investment. When it comes to UDCs or underdeveloped economies, you know that these economies will be having small markets. The market of these economies would be very small. And for the very same reason, you could see that why there is small market? The small market comes as a result of less income in this underdeveloped economies, isn't it? This small market will lead to some uncertainties. And whenever this uncertainties come, this will be acting as some disincentive for the prospective investors. Prospective investors will think, why should I? make a huge investment and invest heavily on some production because the market of the commodity is very small. Even if I produce so much, it will be just creating a market glut situation. So why should I create a market glut situation which will make all my products unsold and why should I suffer a loss from the same? So rather than doing that, it's better for me to stay without going for investment and we have to think about the complementary 
complementaries of industries i have told you that every industry is connected to one another the demand for all products will be something that will be coming from some other industries as well for example if you think about agriculture agriculture will be producing so many commodity isn't it for example just take the case of wheat wheat production in agriculture so wheat is an output in agriculture isn't it this output is used by an agro based industries which will be converting this wheat into flour so wheat flour industry is there and what does it industry do this industry will be converting wheat into flour actually wheat is a raw it wheat is a final output in agriculture this wheat is being taken as a raw material by the wheat flour industry and they will be converting this wheat into flour so flour is their final output isn't it so this means different industries would be acting as complementary to each other again you can say about some fertilizer industry fertilizer industry fertilizer is something which is produced in this industry this would be the final output for this industry and this fertilizer is being supplied to agriculture agriculture uses fertilizer as an input isn't it for in fertilizer industry it's an output but for agriculture it is an input so for the very same reason since we do have some complementaries of industries or since we have interdependence interdependence of industries we have to go for simultaneous large amount of investment in various industries so as to deal with this indivisibility is that was what russell c gordon was telling next moving on to the next kind of indivisibility which is uh, indivisibility in supply of savings you know we are dealing with supply of savings saving part is highlighted here and you know that your income is something that influence your saving so income uh, whenever income increases your saving too will be increasing isn't it this will lead to increase in saving because saving is a function of income but when it comes to low income in under developed economies low income is there in udcs and this low income will lead to low savings in under developed economies isn't it so what happens is that whenever they get some increase in income whenever the people of under developed economies get some increase in income they will be consuming this income so less saving would be there and as a result it is very much difficult to have a growth perspective or a growth possibility here for the very same reason in order to have some growth you have to go for a large investment a big push is required in order to create increase in income to a huge level which will be increasing savings which will ultimately increase investment and this will lead to increase in growth this will lead to increase in growth as well okay now moving on to the fourth kind of indivisibility that uh, rossstein rodin was telling about it is all about the psychological indivisibility so he says that if you are going for some isolated small amount of investment or small efforts of investment like investing very little in agriculture investing little in some food processing industry investing very little in some service industry if you are doing like this it will not be creating sufficient impact on growth it will not be having any uh, change in your economic development so for the very same reason you have to go for a minimum speed you have to go for a critical level of investment and this critical level of investment is something that should be sufficient enough to move the economy from the path of underdeveloped under development under development under development to development to what we need is development this was what resistin rodin was telling about you don't need under development you just need a development aspect 
so you want a critical minimum level of investment okay so that's all about the various indivisibilities about which processing rodent was uh, talking about thank you for watching kindly like share and subscribe to the channel for more videos you can join our telegram community for free for uh, for your doubt clearance or discussion and also you can download the learn economy app i'll be providing the links of both of these in the description box that's it for today thank you for watching and kindly do subscribe like and share the channel for more videos